In this video, we're going to learn about the new component method. Previously, we've used directives for absolutely everything, and that includes template directives and also directives that add custom DOM behavior to the HTML. The component method allows us to use a component architecture in AngularJS. So here, we have a directive, which is a component directive. It has a template and it has a controller, which allows us to increment and decrement the values. So we're going to start learning the component method by refactoring a template directive across to a component. In the HTML, we have an ng controller with a main controller, and we just instantiate it as main. We then have our counter, where we bind count, and then we pass in a main.count. In the main controller, we have this.count, and it's just a base value of 5, so we can set an initial value for the counter. The directive itself looks like this. It uses scope, bind to controller, it has a controller, controller as syntax, and a template. For anything that creates a template and a controller, we should really use a component. If we need custom DOM behavior, we should then use a directive. So we're going to now refactor this directive across to a component. The first thing we need to do is use Angular and then dot module app. We now have a component method. So we can then pass in counter. Now instead of using a function like we would in a directive, we actually use an object. We're going to keep things consistent for how we developed already. So we're going to create var counter and then equals a new object. So the first thing that we need to know is what do we do with scope and bind to controller? We've established that bind to controller is the best way to pass properties down into our new directives. Instead of using isolate scopes or bind to controller, we use a property called bindings, which is just an object. Just like bind to controller, we can pass in count and then use an equals for two way binding. Our controller remains the same, so we can actually copy this and go and paste it into the counter itself. Our template remains exactly the same too, so we can actually copy this straight across as well. Now, I'm actually going to leave controller as syntax off because component method has a default, so we don't actually need to create a custom property. The default is $Control. So we can actually refactor our template to use $Control. I always use $Control because components are always isolate scoped, which means they have their own scope, and they don't interfere with others. So using dollar control is completely safe. It's also nice because it creates consistency throughout the project. In index.html, we can actually comment out the directive and uncomment the component. Let's try this out. On a refresh, we can actually start changing the values and this is actually using the component method. And you can see on the HTML, we have dollar control and dollar control. So we're actually using the new template created with the component. So what else can we do with the component method? We can also have transclude, so this exists as well. We're going to leave it as true and then just comment it out so you can keep note of it after this video is finished. We can also have require. In the advanced directives, we learned that we could use a string, so we could include a parent directive such as this. However, in the component method, this is changed and it's now an object. We're actually going to do a separate video on this, but I'll leave this commented out just for now so you can remember it. So instead of using an array, we actually use a namespace, such as parent, and then we can request a controller from a parent component. The component method doesn't include everything that directives do. If you need some advanced behavior, then you might need to use a directive. However, they should really be used for just DOM manipulation. Components don't have link functions. We actually have lifecycle hooks. We'll explore lifecycle hooks in the next few videos, and we'll also explore one-way data binding, which is how we should build Angular apps nowadays. At the moment, we've been using two-way data binding. Using .component, we can use a component architecture, which allows us to use one-way data flow. Let's explore one-way data flow in the next video, and then we'll move on to learning about the lifecycle hooks in Angular Component. Angular Component changes the way that we should build with Angular, so it's essential to start using components now, along with the component architecture. In the application that we create at the end of this course, we'll actually be creating a fully component-based architecture app which uses one-way data binding and events. We'll learn about this in one-way data flow videos and how we can tie things like require into the lifecycle hooks and their point of existence. And we'll also explore why the lifecycle hooks are important and how we can actually use them.